uh, the radar navigator only survived off the other plane. He was already rescued and he was sitting there and I said, who's crew are you at? He said, oh, oh, oh. I said, okay, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> and I'm sitting down here happy as a clown and the pilot was sitting about as far away as you are from me in a jump seat of the SA-16. And I thought, how could, I said, who's that? And I said, that's the pilot. And I said, how could he be up there helping spot for survivors after going through what we had just gone through? So I didn't think too much more about it because we rescued another guy and then another guy, my navigator and EW. So there's four or five of us in this plane. <clears throat> then we decided, okay, we're going to take off. He hit waves and he hit <clears throat> nothing. About the sixth time, fifth or sixth, I can't remember. We tried it, and he hit, uh, hit these waves, and <laughs> <laughs> straight in, and out right wing first. And I looked out, and the propeller looked like my fingers. And I said, oh, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> Just then, this bilge cover, this red bilge cover, popped up and floated down the aisle. I said, we're going to sink. And they <laughs> sank my life raft. We were going to rescue that thing. I said, wait a minute, guys. What's going on here? And this thing's floating down. I said, that thing is full. And the PJ came by, and he, he didn't seem to be too worried. I was worried. I've been through some stuff, and he, you know, well, we're, we're going to sink if we don't get off. So we're not getting off now. So I looked out at this little porthole. I didn't know. I thought we were going to die right there. Looked out the porthole, and that orange and black Norwegian freighter is just uh, a couple hundred yards off our, our, our starboard side here. Port side, sorry. Anyway, he's just sitting there, and he's sending over a longboat. This longboat was about, about as wide as this table, maybe, and about as long as this room. Biggest longboat ever. It was like a canoe out in the South China Sea. So they said, get in this. I said, you're crazy, but I got in it anyway. And I'm standing there. And this is when it really hit me hard. I said, well, isn't the pilot coming? And they said, no, Captain Robinson's dead. So I'm, I'm stunned. I'm sitting in this little canoe. They, they rowed us over to the ship. And they threw down a rope. Now this thing, about twice as high as our, this room, they said, climb up. Climb up? I can't even move. And Colonel Anderman had broken some ribs. He couldn't climb up that. They tied it around him and pulled him up. But I was the first one up because I was the smallest. They wanted to see if I'd be able to do it. So I started walking up that thing. And I was hurting. And I got up to a point I couldn't get any higher. I just didn't have the strength. And they grabbed me and pulled me across this gun with splinters in it. Splinters all from here down to my belly button. And it was just not painful, really. I was just elated. I was alive on a ship now. And I'm in my, my underwear, and I look up, and there's three ladies and a bunch of kids standing there watching me. <laughs> and I thought, well, okay, but we got all the others up there in the same condition as us. They took care of us really well. It was a Norwegian freighter, the Argo. And they, they took us in, tried to give us some orange soda and some breads and fish. <laughs> it was truly sickening. I couldn't eat for three days. None of us could. So we, uh, they took us in, gave us a shower, took our flight stuff, and washed it all up and gave it back to us. And I remember that little knife. Uh, the sailor came in and said, hey, we had to take this out of your flight suit. He said, here you go. He says, this is really a neat knife. And he started talking about it. So I said, well, hey, you keep it. So I gave it to him. But he was just a nice guy. All the Norwegians were just truly wonderful to us. And they saved our lives. They took us for about an hour and a half on the ship. And then the Norwegian, I mean, they, uh, Navy ship, the Point Defiance, that dropped the bath bathosphere Trieste down to the bottom of the Marianas Trench a couple of years before that. It showed up and they transferred us to that, but they did it first class. They took and we dropped down the rope again, but we got on this powerboat. They took us over, drove us in the back, and um, we got in and they asked us especially what our names were and serial numbers several times. We had to tell the captain what happened. We had to tell this what happened. And they showed us how to use the head. And they did all this stuff. And they took us back to Civic Bay and then flew us to, to the Clark Hospital. Uh, we were the first people, I think, to go in the brand new Clark Hospital where all the POWs came out after the war. 
And we're sitting in there, and I said, hey, my neck hurts like mad. And he said, well, you just ejected it. Sure. So they sent us back to Guam, and we were there for the accident report and going through the boards and all that stuff. We finished with that stuff, and then we got to go home. And it was absolutely wonderful to be able to be alive and get home again. And I had just gotten married, and I saw my bride. It was just indescribable. So we were saved, and there were a lot more things to come, but the Vietnam War had just started, and it wasn't going to end for eight years. We could have ended it to start. We didn't. It was all political, and I realized that about three-quarters of the way through the war. They're not going to let us win this thing. We can win it, but we're going to pull out, and they're going to do what they want anyway, and that's what we're doing now, and we can't do that anymore. We've got to stop or, or don't go in at all. And I'm one of these that say, no more foreign wars. You want me to fight? I won't. I'm just that pissed off about it all. If you want to have a war, I'll be glad to fight. If you don't want to have a war and you want to play pissing games with the enemy, I'm not going to do it. That's the way I feel. I would give my life for this country in a heartbeat. I would still do it. So I went back and flew two tour, no, another tour in B-52s, two tours in F-105s, and another tour in F-111s. And then, I thought that was enough, but that, that was, you know, it was just, I thought everybody did. But it was, I tell you, it was an experience that I wouldn't forget and can't remember, because I don't want to, but it's something that was over. And I, I'm glad I lived through it. But that's the end of my the story. There's a lot more to come. Oh, I know one thing. I wanted to read to you the very opening of my next book, because it kind of describes how I feel about these things. And because I went on to fly F-105s, and that, this is the story, Combat High, about flying F-105s. It's just a short little thing I want to read you. Uh, this is the next book, because this happens right after this book by Don Harton. Uh, Think where man's glory begins and ends, and say that my glory was that I had such friends, by William Butler Yeats. And the book starts, the plenty of lonely tones from a distant trumpet playing taps floated through the trees in the soft summer breeze when we paid Joe Robertson his final tribute. As the last notes faded, a B-52 flew overhead low and slow. A smuffled roar attracted and held our tear-filled eyes until it flew out of sight. And the military voice called out crisply and rifle fire responded with three volleys. The tears streamed down our faces and soon we were left with only a profound silence. As a member of Captain Robertson's honor guard, I was not at all embarrassed in expressing my grief. We dried our tears and blew our noses and wandered off dazed. The Vietnam War had barely begun, and already we were an integral part of it. Our unit was blooded after only one combat mission, the first B-52 arc light strike. So that's my story, and there's two more to come, and the books are being written now. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer anything you want.